Howdy. What you're looking at is a Traditions Trapper. This is a, uh, uh, I think it's 60 caliber. Uh, it's rifled, by the way. It's only one single spiral down there, but it is rifled of uh, a 60 caliber flintlock uh, with a double set trigger on it. It's a nice old pistol. <laughs> it works well. There's only one consumable besides powder and ball that you need in this thing. And that's a flint. What's a flintlock, by the way? I should mention that. I mean, there, there are, I, I should never assume that folks watching this, oh, excuse me, are as uh, well versed in this subject as, as I and most of the other gun nuts out here. <clears throat> so, what's a flintlock? Flintlock was one of the early uh, iterations on the road to modern firearms. Uh, it was preceded by the, uh, the firelock, uh, the original uh, one of these called a, a snap haunts, and then, uh, well, actually, there was a wheel lock, and then the snap haunts, and then the flintlock. And the flintlock was developed and used by many, many countries in many, many different guises. This one was sort of like a, a Northwest trade gun. It was uh, this kind of, of pistol was used throughout the... Uh, uh, the Pacific North, well, not the Pacific, the, uh, the, what was the Old Northwest and Canada among trappers, and uh, which is why this is called a Traditions Trapper. Uh, it's uh, an interesting old pistol, and the way it works is you would put powder in here, a little tiny dab of, of a very fine dust powder like 4F, shut the pan, it's called the pan, uh, and it's got the striker or, or steel. And then this is called the cock. You do that with the cock. Then, let's see. I think it's set the tr trigger. And then, I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's empty. Fire, yeah. You see all that, that spark that came off? Well, that's because flint contacting hard steel will produce a strike striked uh, spark. And someone noticed this, and they created a flintlock to take advantage of it. Well, to do that, you need flint. And in Europe, this is what they had. These are various flints. These ones in particular, I've got several of them, I picked up from a, a load of ones that had been napped 200 years ago for the Napoleonic Wars by England. Uh, these are a real English flints, and uh, they came, I think, from I think from Wales actually. But uh, these are all. Uh, uh, well, the, the, the tale is, is they were in a, in a cask in a warehouse in London, and that Lon that London warehouse was was uh, scheduled to be uh, turned into uh, apartment buildings for the the new towny type people who want to live there. And they were just selling off surplus all the junk they found in the warehouse. And this cask was one of the things they found. And when they popped it open, it was full of these. These had been uh, napped for the Brown Bess, the uh, land pattern musket used by uh, the Redcoats in the uh, what was called the Peninsular Campaign against Bonnie, or Boney, the uh, uh, fight against Napoleon Bonaparte. Uh, and the Peninsular Campaign means along uh, Portugal and Spain. And these are interesting little flints. They, they do work pretty well. They're, uh, they're kind of rare to find these days, but um, the guy who uh, bought that uh, auction, he, I don't know what, how it, the iterations that ended up with him selling them on eBay, but he did. Uh, these, not that one, here's one, this one, those, I think, I'm not sure, but I think they came, come from France. And this, I don't even think this is flint. I think this is chert. And I have a lot of that. By the way, here's my attempts at making some. I'm not very good at napping. Napping, what, what napping involves is you take a big piece of leather and run it over your leg so that your leg doesn't get hurt. Then you take a striker stone and very carefully and along the, uh, the known uh, patterns of, of fracture of the flint or chert, you strike... And, it, and a flake of a flint or chert will, will flake off. And then you take a, a piece of antler or bone and use it to very carefully poke and, and, and create this flat area here and, uh, and here. 
and then hopefully it will, will break in such a way that it makes a nice flat, straight, sharp corner that you can use to stick in your cock. This one's obviously for a much bigger uh, uh, cock than this, and I would probably use that, well, on the brown bess or my other flintlock. For this thing, I bought some, and these are the ones I bought. Can I, can I open this dang thing? Let's see. There. As you can see, they're smaller, but uh, serviceable. What is this? Oh, I didn't know that was in there. I'll make a note of that. Anyway, uh, I'll put those back later. Anyway, if you feel like a short nap, this is what you do, I suppose. 